Hey, it is Craig the Pool Man with Pool Specialist. Today we have a short video for you on how to figure out what's going on with a lethargic Polaris 380. So it will also work for a 280 and the premium models that you're going to see coming out that are on a high pressure line. Without further ado, let's get to the video. As you can see, our Polaris 380 is just sitting there not doing anything. Well, it doesn't help that the water is oh, probably 50 degrees, maybe even less. However, it's still not moving at all. And so we're gonna go figure out what is going on with this. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna look at the backup valve. So we're gonna pull this out of the water and presto, bingo, our backup valve is constantly running. So the purpose of this backup valve is so that when the Polaris runs for a few minutes and it finds itself in a corner, this will turn on, typically for about 30 seconds, and then it will pull the Polaris back out of that corner. Then this will shut off and it will allow the Polaris wheels to turn. Well, so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to replace this backup valve. So the first thing we'll have to do is we'll actually have to shut the system off. Okay, so now what we have here is the backup valve. And of course the nuts go towards the backup valve because they actually hold the hose on. And then you just kind of wiggle it off. Now it's really important when you're putting this on that you put it on in the same direction because of course this little thruster is backing it up. And so as you can see, as I match this up, it's going to back up. So make sure you put a nut on there. You've got a new nut. And I would suggest using the new nuts, push this on, and then bring the nut down and tighten it up. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. All right, so we take this nut off, and now we've removed the old backup valve. We're gonna hold, go ahead and set that on the side. We're gonna put this one on. This, the nut goes on here with the threads facing out. Then you're gonna push this hose on and presto bingo, put the screw or the nut onto that. Now, some of the things that you're gonna notice is, and we have some issues because the water's so cold and you get memory in the hose. So you'll see that it's really not cooperating very well with us. Um, so it would be better to do this in the summertime. However, what I want to point out is that the spacing on the floats is extremely important. So you, you want to make sure that they're not too far apart. You don't need it that close there. And then you're going to go through and make sure your swivels are working. Then again, you don't want more than about a foot and a half in between any of these. And then when you get to the very end, this float should be relatively close to the backup valve. So adjust your floats, make sure your swivels are working, and therefore that should work. Now one of the more important things is do we have enough pressure from our actual pump? So what we're going to do, even though we've just replaced that backup valve, is we're going to check the pressure on the pump. And so we remove our Polaris from the end of the hose. And then we have a special stick. Okay, so this is our special stick. And you'll notice we have a pressure gauge on it. You'll notice that that looks just like the end of the Polaris. So we're gonna go ahead and steal that nut. We're gonna put that on there. We're going to go ahead and push this on here. We're gonna turn on our filter pump. And then we're gonna turn on our Polaris pump. And we're gonna check our pressure. Okay, so we have our stick connected now. And you can see how strong the pressure is coming out of here. And that's from the booster pump. And so then this gauge right here 
needs to read between 28 and 32 pounds. So we're right where it needs to be. And we can give you the part number for this special stick that you can then order from anywhere online, probably on Amazon even. And that is going to tell you whether you have the proper pressure to actually run the flares correctly. Because if you don't have enough pressure, it's not gonna turn the wheels and do everything that it needs to do. Okay, so of course now we put the flares back on here. Put the flares back on. And what you wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to check to make sure your wheels are running right. And you could just turn them and they should all turn simultaneously with each other. There's belts that connect these two wheels, and then this is part of the drive mechanism. If this isn't turning nice and smoothly, and it's sticking, then this is gonna stop. And if you need to learn how to rebuild this, we have yet another video of how to rebuild it. So now, we're gonna go ahead and drop this in the water, and we're gonna see how this functions. Okay, so there you go. We've now fixed our Polaris. You can see it traveling across the pool. The tail is wagging. It looks to be very happy. It's going to get caught up because it just can't pull the hose when it's that cold and rigid. But that's how it works. All right, that concludes our video on how to figure out what's wrong with a lethargic 380 Polaris or Polaris 380. And I hope you enjoyed it. Please drop us a like and have a great day.